Next person is a realtor. <clears throat> Realtors are super important to this, right? And the reason for this is because, you know, maybe they won't really help you find the deals, but what they can do is actually help you get a good renter or get, get a good tenant in there and help advise you about what's going on in the market. Again, you want to find someone that is well-versed in real estate investing, someone that is going to help you through this and understand the local market because they're going to be able to walk you through each, you know, each and every step of the way. <clears throat> and they may also have connections into other people that you may need during this process. So realtors are super important. They, they do get things moved. Um, finding a good realtor is really important, but find one that has real estate investing experience because that's important. They, they need to understand what you're doing and why you're doing it so that they don't just advise you just to sell the property or they don't advise you just to say, Hey, that's not a good idea. When in fact, like they truly don't understand real estate investing. And I will tell you like 99% of realtors will tell you that they understand real estate investing, but they gen they don't, they haven't invested in real estate. Most of them don't own properties. So make sure you hire a realtor, hire somebody and talk to them, build that relationship and let them know, Hey, I am a invest, you know, make sure that they're investor friendly realtors and <clears throat> they're also talking the language that you are talking. And the best thing in these situations is to sort of let them talk first and, you know, ask them about their real estate investing career, let them talk first. And then you're going to know really quick if they are versed in real estate investing, because you're going to understand the language one thanks to this course and because you guys are in it and you're doing the research. So make sure you hire a investor friendly realtor network with them, you know, take them out for coffee, build that relationship. It's super important. All of these people you should be building relationships with. The next person I want to jump to is the property manager. Property managers are super important. If you are going to scale, you got to have a good property manager in place so that they can help you get the properties rented fast and they're going to help, you know, create great cash flow in your properties and help optimize everything because too many property managers just sit back and relax and they just collect that eight or 10% of that revenue and they don't really do anything for the property. They don't really do anything for the owner. They don't tell them, Hey, look, I think you can leverage this way, or I think you could do it this way or that way. But Make sure you hire someone that also has real estate investors that are real estate investors themselves. And <clears throat> maybe they are, you know, just, just starting out, but they have the real estate investing. That's okay. But make sure that you hire someone or you build that relationship with someone that has real estate investing experience and they understand what it's like to be a landlord because they themselves have properties and <clears throat> they have a streamlined process. So build a relationship with a property manager. You may not use them for the first or second or whatever, but if you are going to scale, it's really important to have a great property manager because they are going to help you be able to cash flow these properties, increase rents when it's time and negotiate new leases <clears throat> before they even become old leases. So make sure you find a good property manager. They're super important. Not to mention <clears throat> property managers can help you find people in other places. They can help you find, you know, um, a great realtor. They can help you find a good lender. They can help you find a good hard money lender. They are sort of, they know everybody because they are talking to everybody. They have relationships with good contractors and whatnot, <clears throat> which is the next person is our contractors. Contractors are really important. Having a good contractor will make or break your project. And I, I don't say that lightly because <clears throat> If you don't have a good contractor, they're going to be late. They're going to, you know, have overages and they're really not going to help you optimize your property. They're not going to help you optimize your property to get it to the point where it looks great, feels great, and it's good quality. You want a contractor that is honest, um, that will tell you exactly, Hey, look, man, I, I don't think you need to replace the water heater. I think you can get two or three more years out of it. But just so you know, it's going to come up versus somebody that's like, oh, yeah, your water heater. Yeah, I think you should change it. Right. You want people that's going to help you. Um, now, I'm not saying like get the hairy homeowner guy because the price has a lot to do with it. Don't hire the cheapest. Don't you don't necessarily need the most expensive guy. <clears throat> but one of the stories I was told by a uh, by my cabinet guy actually was, 
you know, he's like cry once. And what that means is essentially sometimes you pay, you have to pay the money that you really don't want to pay to get the project done. And that's okay. Cry once. But if you have to cry twice, like don't cry twice because you, you, the first guy messed up the cheap guy. So you're crying because you're late on a project and then you still have to go pay the good guy to get it done and you cry twice. So make sure that you don't cry twice, cry once, pay the money, pay, pay them what they're worth and get the job done the, the correct the first time around. So that way you don't have any delays. But a contractor will be able to help provide great pricing. They're going to have relationships. They're going to be able to turn over the projects quickly. With contractors, make sure you ask them, hey, what projects do you have going on? Can we see a sample project? Can we go to one of your job sites? Look for cleanliness with the contractor. Look for um, you know how they treat their subcontractors on the job and how they talk to the guys because that's going to give you a good indication of how that relationship is going to be. Um, you know, always look at people and see how they do business because, you know, I always say <clears throat> people can fake it for the first hour, but after that, there's no much, not much you can do to fake it, right? So, you know, hang out with them a little bit more, get to know them and see what they're like. And, and you can really tell who a good contractor is. The next person is an interior designer. Now, this person you may not ever need because maybe you know somebody that or maybe you're just great at designing properties but <clears throat> it's really important where let's say you have to exit a property really quick you need an interior designer to come in and stage everything and get out they they can be huge right they are beneficial or maybe you're doing a um, midterm rental with your burr right <clears throat> you want someone that's going to stage the place make it look nice for not a lot of money you don't want someone that only picks designer brands you want someone that's crafty that knows where the local you know, furniture shops are, know where, when the staging companies are selling uh, products, know when, you know, hey, this store has <clears throat> sales every Thursday or whatever. You want that person. You need that person that's going to help you really do things right and look, make it look good, that is good quality, as well as like a great looking product. The next person is an architect. Architect is super important. Like I said before, you may not need an architect on every single project, depending on where you're located. But an architect is super important to have because they will help you get out of situations when you need to. A lot of times you buy these properties and they already have issues with it that is related to permitting and architectural drawings. So you want someone that is that is going to be really good to help you through that process that understands that local um, ordinances and local codes so that you know they can get you out rather quickly. The other thing is with your contractor, your contractor may already have architects that can help you or they may be, be able to do the drawings for you. <clears throat> the other thing too is with, with these people, you can have multiple in each category, right? And it's important to have multiple because let's say you, know, you only have one architect and your ar architect is on vacation and you need something, well, you need to have another architect that you can go to. The other thing too with architects and people that are professionals, you should have... <clears throat> I was told this about, about lawyers, and I think it's the same thing about architects, but have a country lawyer and have a city lawyer. And what that means is, you know, when I say that is have a city architect and then have a country architect. Have have a city architect that does the big bad plans for you to get everything done, get, every, get the majority of stuff approved and do the entire building and whatnot. You may want a great architect on that that thinks through everything. But if you just need a detail submitted for a bathroom or something, then you can just go to your country architect, the guy that knows how to do CAD, that can get your detail drawn up rather quickly for a lot less cost than the city architect, right? So have different types of architects, have different calibers of people because they're going to be really helpful in getting your projects done. So remember, you want a good mentor, a good partner, a great lender, hard money lender, and a regular lender, a, not, not just a hard money lender, but a lender that does non-QM products, um, great realtor, great property manager, a good contractor, interior designer, and architect. And the last one I'm going to say is an insurance guy. Make sure you have a good insurance guy, someone that's going to help you get all these properties insured. Talk to them about insuring the projects as they're going on because they're important to finishing the job. And making sure that you can go to closing. So make sure you have a good insurance guy. Maybe even talk to them about a blanket statement. Especially as you add more properties, you're going to want to add what's called an umbrella policy. 
So talk to them about that. Tell them what your goals are and let them know what you have intent, what your intentions are. So there is a template for this. I'm going to share it below and make sure you guys fill it out. Go build relationships with people, ask them questions and learn about their story. Ask people what their story is. Don't ask them what they do. Ask them how they got started and write and take notes, take notes, take a lot of notes and remind them of that as you talk to them. Build those relationships strong. It's super important to getting a burr done because these people will make or break your project. So hope you guys um, enjoyed it and I'll see you guys on the next video and we'll get started. Take care.